Right, good afternoon, lower fifth. Here is the first one of the of the two juvenile videos, your next text. He was a, a satirist, a, a poet who wrote lots of um, abusive, dramatic monologues going on about everything that was wrong with Rome, uh, foreigners being there, corruption, all this kind of thing. And here's the end of Satire 11. It's, it's a bit from the last section, which is normally a, um, about an invitation to a meal. But here he, he, uh, he uh, complains about about Rome, the noise in Rome, and how it's good just to free yourself from such cares. So, first section, uh, totam hodier romam circus capit, that's okay, I'd have thought today, hodier, the, the circus, that's our good, our circus maximus, of course, catches, holds the whole of Rome, okay, it encloses, captures the whole of Rome, as in, it feels as if everyone in Rome is in the Circus Maximus. And the frog, or the, the roar, the noise, um, strikes or hits the ear. Okay, so the huge roar of the crowd. Imagine what that must have been like. Um, then he says a kind of snide remark. Uh, by which, quo is the ablative of the relative pronoun, by which I collect literally, by which I understand the result the victory, the winning, the, it's our word, event, the victory here, the victory of a green cloth. Okay, again, a bit like Pliny, um, complaining about the fact that colours are obsessed about, even though they're just colours. So he hears this huge roar, by which I, I, I assume, if you like, it does say in the notes, um, I understand, the victory of a green cloth, i.e. that the green team have won. Then he goes on, for if they didn't, for if the green cloth lost, our word defect or defective or deficient comes from that, for if the if the green cloth lost, you would see uh, this city, Hank Urbem, Maestam and Atonitan, grieving and in shock, astonished. You would, so if, if they'd lost, you would see this city grieving and in shock, just as if, well, it's like. Now, this is a reference to the Battle of Cannae, which was a battle where Hannibal, as you can see down here, defeated the Romans in the south of Italy. A terrible Roman defeat. Um, ignore the beat there. So, just like with the consuls, consulibus victis, defeated, so when the consuls were defeated, in the pulvis means dust, pulvis rather, it's where, where the word pulverise comes from, which means to turn into dust, in the dust of Cannae. So you would see this city grieving and in shock, just as when the consuls were defeated in the dust of Cannae. So the green team losing is as bad as if we'd lost a huge defeat. Obviously it isn't, but he's saying that ordinary Romans take it that badly. Good. So today the whole uh, of Rome is in, in the circus, huge roar, the Greens have probably won, um, and if they haven't won, blind me, then we're in trouble because all the Rome is going to be in grieving shock for ages. Right, welcome to the second part of the juvenile. Um, here he talks about how um, he's not bothered by the races, just as Pliny, but unlike Pliny who wants to go and write and read and stuff and do literary things, juvenile just wants to relax and chill a bit. But, and, there, and he wants to leave the, the chariot racing to younger people. So the first two words, spectant UNAs, that's the young men watch, isn't it? But that will be spectant, which is the indicative form. This with an E there is the present subjunctive, which is beyond GCC for you people, um, but appears in our set text. And the, the force of it here is to mean kind of let them watch. So let the young men watch is our first bit. Now, Decet here in the notes say it is right, but I think suits is better here, and certainly in the translation they provide, they use the translation suits. So let's go for suits. Um, so let the young men watch, young men whom, right, uh, shouting and bold bets suit. That's not singular, really. Who shouting and a bold or reckless bet suits, decet. Okay, so he's saying that uh, it's more appropriate, more fitting for young men to shout around a lot and to make rash bets on things rather than he as an older man. And then whom it suits again, that decade appears in both clauses, 
um, whom it suits to have sat next to a sophisticated, stylish girl, a cultivated girl. And that obviously reminds us of the Ovid poem. So that whole sentence up to the colon is, let young men watch the races implied, um, whom shouting and reckless betting suits, and whom it suits to um, sit next to, sit beside, to have sat beside, because that is actually a perfect, as you probably know by now, uh, whom, whom it suits to have sat beside a, a stylish girl. Okay, and we're now going to what he wants to do, that bibat and effugiat are further present subjunctives, so they're further wishes, they're let, okay? So he says, let, that's drink, isn't it, bibat? Let, um, on, not, nostra means our, but here it means my. So let my cuticula, contractor, let my wrinkled skin, let my contracted cuticle, I suppose, in terms of derivatives. So let my um, wrinkled skin drink in the Wernum Solem, drink in the spring sun. So he wants to just take his clothes off, lie outside in the sun and, and have a nice, uh, a nice bit of sunbathing and let it flee the toga, which is obviously what he has to do to drink up the sun. So the two things are in, are in reverse order there. So he says, let my wrinkled skin throw off its toga almost and then drink up the, the spring sun, which is a nice image at the end of this section. Well, nice in a way. <laughs> Good. Right. Over to you guys.